Hi, today we're doing a review on factoring skills that we learned in grade 10. So factoring is an extremely important skill. It's one of those things that in grade 11 and beyond, I just need to assume that you know how to do it. It's going to be used all the time. So it's just something that you need to understand how to do. So after today's video, if you still don't get it, make sure you watch this over as many times as you need to so you can master these factoring skills. So remember that factoring is kind of the opposite of expanding. So it takes something that looks like an addition sentence and turns it into a multiplication sentence. So why do we factor? Well, the real reason for factoring is to find the zeros or the x-intercepts of any function or equation. So that's the values of x that make y equal to zero. That's useful with graphing, and it's also useful when solving a quadratic so that you can find the values of x that make left side equals right side. Factoring turns an addition sentence into a multiplication sentence. This is useful because when two numbers multiply to zero, then one of those numbers actually has to be zero. So when you have something times something, you know that one of those two factors has to equal zero, so then you can solve that. As opposed to when you're adding a bunch of things together, um, you can have any multiple different ways of making that equal uh, zero. You can do plus five, minus five, plus zero, that would equal zero plus two, plus three, minus five, that would equal zero. There's infinite ways. Whereas when you're multiplying two numbers together, one of them has to be zero in order for the product to be zero. Um, to check if your factoring is correct, you just expand using FOIL and then collect like terms and you should get back to what you started on. So you've learned four different types of factoring. The, uh, the first one is common factoring. And often common factoring is used along with another type of factoring. So you need to know how to do this. So you always look for a common factor, which is something you can remove from every term. And when I say remove, that really means that it divides evenly into all of those terms. So when you're looking at something like this, 2x squared plus 4x, you're saying, what's the largest number and the largest variable I can divide out of every term? So the largest number, of course, is 2, goes easily into 2 and 4. And then we have to look at which, how many x's we can take out. So this has an x squared, which is like x times x, and this has a, uh, an x, so that means we can take out 1x. So 2x is the common factor that can be removed. So then you have to say, put the brackets and think, well, what is left over after I divide this 2x squared divided by 2x. So if you need to on the side, you can actually do 2x squared divided by 2x. The 2's cross off, and your exponent laws say that this would be removed, so you just have an x left. So the first term is reduced to x, and then 4x divided by 2x, you can do the same thing if you need to. That's just 2. So 2x squared plus 4x is factored to 2x bracket x plus 2. And you can check if you're right by expanding. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. So you should always at least do that mentally if you can. Um, just a quick check to make sure you're right. Now, you know that this is fully factored. You know your expression is fully factored if you cannot factor anything more out of the terms. So nothing more can be factored out of this x plus 2. There's no common uh, number and there's no common variable that can be factored. So this would be called fully factored. So when you're factoring, obviously you need to do it correctly, but you also need to make sure that your expressions are fully factored. Okay, let's go to this next one. So 11 and 22 are the numbers, so the uh, 11 can be factored out. Then they both have, this has a y squared and this has an xy. So they both have one y. Um, at least, so you can take a y. But this first term doesn't have an x, so you can't take the x out. <clears throat> so 11y is the common factor. So then 11y squared, when divided by 11y, what's left is y. And then subtract 22xy. Well, when you do, if you need to do this on the side, when you do 22xy divided by 11y, the 22 divided by 11 is 2. Um, x divided by, there's no x, so that just stays x, and y divided by y, those cross out. So you're left with minus 2x. Again, you can FOIL this out, just expand it out, and you'd get back to the original. Okay, this is a little bit of a different situation because we have 
a monomial times a binomial <clears throat> plus a monomial times a binomial. So what's common? So this has a P times X plus 5, Q times X plus 5. So what's common is X plus 5. They both have the term X plus 5. So you can take that whole X plus 5 and remove it. But then the tricky part is what's left. Well, this P times X plus 5, when you divide X plus 5, you're just left with P. Okay? If you need to do it on the side, you can to see what it looks like. When you divide this by x plus 5, these cross out, and you're just left with p. Same thing here, you're just left with q. So, your final factor is x plus 5 times p plus q. So to see if this is right, you would FOIL, um, but then you would get something that doesn't look like this, so you'd have to expand this as well, make sure that their expansions both are the same to check if this is right. Okay, now this is something that's called factoring by grouping. So anytime you see four terms like this, you should know it's factoring by grouping. So you group the first two terms together and the last two terms together and think what's common. So between the a squared and the minus ab, an a is common. So a bracket a minus b. And then here, a c is common. So subtract c and then a. Now think about this. Should this be plus b or minus b? It's actually a minus b because this minus c was factored out. So when you factor out a negative from a positive, it becomes a negative, so that when you multiply them back through, it would become a positive again. So be careful for your negatives and positives. Okay, now look at this. We have now a scenario that's similar to question c. a minus b is a common factor. So when factoring by grouping, this is the result you should get. You should always get that there is a common factor in the second line, and then you just factor as you did above. So you would remove, you'd factor out the a minus b, and you'd be left with a minus c. And that's your final answer. of squares. So a difference of squares occurs when there are two terms, both of them are perfect squares, so know your perfect squares, okay? So your perfect squares are like 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 16, 25, etc. So you should be able to recognize perfect squares up to at least 15 squared, which is 225, okay? Um, and then there's a negative sign, a minus sign in between these terms. So that's what it means, a difference of squares. So a square minus a square. <clears throat> so the generic form would be a squared minus b squared, okay? So if you have a squared minus b squared, this factors to a plus b and a minus b, okay? A common mistake is that someone might put two pluses or two minuses, but it has to be a plus and a minus. Why? Because when you have a plus and a minus, then that's what makes the middle term cancel out. That's why there's only two terms here instead of three, because a times a is a squared, a minus, a times b is negative ab, and then b times a is ab, so you have minus ab plus ab, which just gets rid of it, and then minus b squared. So you have to have a plus and a minus, okay? So here's an example where you have x squared minus 25, so you can think about your a here equals x, and your b here equals 5, okay? Because you have to think of what's being squared. In this case, it's 20, um, 5 that's being squared to get 25. So x plus 5, x minus 5. And you can FOIL it out and see if you would get back to x squared minus 25. Okay, now this one has a coefficient on both of these terms. So, but they have to be uh, perfect squares, which they are. So this is really 3y all squared. And this is really 2a all squared. Notice I'm using brackets to show that the entire thing is being squared. So then you go, it's just 3y plus 2a, 3y minus 2a. And again, FOIL, make sure you get back to your original. In this case, you might be thinking, hmm, you made a mistake because 3 and 27 aren't perfect squares. But they do have a common factor. Remember, you should look for a common factor. 
So there is a common factor of 3. So when you remove the 3, you're left with a squared minus 9. So now this is a difference of squares. a plus 3, a minus 3. And there you have it. Okay, now we get to simple trinomials. So simple trinomials, um, a trinomial that has three terms, and a simple trinomial is where a equals one. So a, remember, <clears throat> is just the coefficient on the x squared term. So these are all simple trinomials. It doesn't note that it doesn't matter if it's an x or a p or a c. That makes no difference. Okay. Um, so when you're doing a simple trinomial, you think what two numbers multiply to the last and add to the middle. So in this case, what two numbers multiply to 4 and add to 5? So uh, if you're stumped, think about the multiplying first. Okay. So what multiplies to 4? 1 times 4 or 2 times 2? Which one of those adds to 5? Well, 1 times 4 does. So 1 times 4 is 4 and 1 plus 4 is 5. So that's when you know that you picked the right numbers. So then you just go directly to x plus 1 times x plus 4. And it's as simple as that. Okay? So FOIL it out, x squared plus 4x plus 1x is 5x plus 4. We did it right. So FOIL it out in your head or on paper just to make sure you did it right. Now when you start adding negatives as examples b and c as you can see there, uh, you have to, it's a bit more complicated because you have to make sure that you're putting the negative number in the right place. So in this example, two numbers we're going to multiply to positive 6 and add to negative 5. So think about it. If two numbers multiply to a positive and add to a negative, then both of the, those numbers have to be negative. Okay? So uh, what multiplies to 6? Well, 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. So minus 1 and minus 6 would work here, but those would add to negative 7, so that doesn't work. So it has to be negative 2 and negative 3, because minus 2 and minus 3 is positive 6, and minus 2 plus a minus 3 is negative 5. So then we have p minus 2 and p minus 3, and again, FOIL it out, make sure you did it right. Now in this case, it has to multiply to negative 28 and add to positive 3. So if two numbers multiply to a negative, then one has to be negative and one has to be positive. Okay? But they're going to add to a positive number. So think about all the, all the different pairs that would multiply to 28. So 28 and 1, uh, 4 and 7, 14 and 2. Okay? So out of these, can we make a combination, one being positive and one being negative, that would add to positive 3? Well, 28 and 1 won't work. But what about 4 and 7? positive 7 and negative 4. 7 minus 4 is positive 3. Notice it wouldn't work if you did negative 7 and positive 4 because that would add to negative 3. So you have to be really careful that you're looking at if these numbers are positive or negative. So you're left with c plus 7, c minus 4. Again, boil it out, make sure you did it right. Okay, here are two more examples that get a bit more complicated. This one's complicated because you start with an x cubed, so you're like, how do I do that? But notice that all three of these terms contain an x, so think about what that means. It means you could factor out the x, okay? So this can be factored to remove an x, and then you're left with x squared plus 3x plus 2. So now this is a simple trinomial that can be factored to x plus 2 x plus 1. There you go. Now this is even a bit more difficult because even though this is x squared, you have this pesky little y. So here's a tip for you. When you have two variables, in this case x and y, 
remove one uh, variable, sorry, that's just a variable, then add it back in at the end. So I'm going to rewrite this without the y. So x squared plus 7x plus 12. That looks like what we're dealing with. Okay, so multiply to 12, add to 7. That's going to be x plus 3, x plus 4. Okay, but we need to add the y back in. So you're just going to add the y after the 3 and after the 4. So x plus 3y, x plus 4y. And that works. Foil it out and you'll see how this turns back into the original. might want to pause the video and do some of the practice questions um, because those first three types of factoring, uh, if once you get good at them, they're relatively simple. Complex trinomials are, well they're just that, they're complex. So they take a bit more um, of thinking. So let's make sure that you can grasp first of all those first three types before you move on to complex trinomials. So a, a complex trinomial has an A value of anything other than one. So you use decomposition to do that. So remember to always look for a common factor first because sometimes you can turn what looks like a complex trinomial into a simple trinomial by factoring out the A value. And if you can do that, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. If you don't do that, you can still get the right answer. You just have to make sure it's fully factored. Okay, so this is a complex trinomial because your A value is two, it's not one. And two cannot be factored out because it's not a common factor but amongst seven and five. So. What you have to do is look for two numbers that add to the B value, so in this case, 7. So something plus something will equal 7. And here's the difference. The product has to be A times C. So in this case, 2 times 5. Sorry, that's a 5. So something that multiplies to 10. Okay, so those two numbers would be 2 and 5. So now, that's the first step. The difference here is the product is A times C. Now the next difference is that you use these to decompose the middle term. So you leave 2x squared like it is, but now you turn the 7x into 2x plus 5x. Sorry, there's a plus there. Okay, 2x plus 5x. Now really you haven't changed uh, the meaning of this trinomial, you've just put 7x into a 2x and a 5x, so it really means the same thing, but now we're going to be able to, to do factoring by grouping, which we learned before. So you will put the first two together, take out a 2x, you're left with x plus 1. Okay, be careful, you have to have that 1 there, you can't just put x, because remember when you multiply it through, you have to get back to this original, and 2x divided by 2x is just 1. And then from here you can remove a 5, that's common, and you're left with x plus 1. Now if you did it correctly, this second uh, term here, this binomial, sorry, should be the same thing. That's how you know you're doing your decomposition correctly. So now x plus 1 is common, and then you're just left with 2x plus 5. Okay, so notice it's, it's factored because it's something times something. And notice that it's factored fully because nothing can be factored out of this binomial and nothing is common in this binomial either. One more thing that you should notice is the order in which I put the 2x and the 5x. I could have put 5x plus 2x or 2x plus 5x. I chose to do it in this order because I knew that I would be factoring this 2x with this 2x squared and this 5x with this 5. So to make the grouping with the common factoring easier, you should put the ones that go together, or would easily factor together, next to each other, just to make the process easier on yourself. Okay, so this next example, the sum, again, is the B value. So in this case, it's minus 11, that's the B value. And the product is A times C, which is 12 times two, so 24. So two numbers that multiply to positive 24 and add to negative 11. 
So 1 and 24 don't make sense. 2 and 12 don't make sense. Um, so it has to be, let's think about this, uh, 6 and 4 doesn't make sense. It has to be 8 and 3. So minus 8 and minus 3. Multiply to, neg to positive 24 and add to negative 11. So 12y squared. Um, I'm going to put the minus 3 next to 12 and the minus 8 next to the positive 2. So minus 3y minus 8y plus 2. Okay, so that's the decomposition part where I've put this decompose the middle term into two separate terms. Now I do the factoring by grouping. So the common factor here is 3y. I'm left with 4y minus 1. And here I take out a minus 2. But you have to be careful here, okay? So minus 8y divided by minus 2 is positive 4y. But then 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. Remember that if you were to FOIL this back out, to multiply this back out, this negative 2 times negative 1 would be positive 2, okay? So if you put a positive 1 there, that would be correct. Also, a symbol to you should be that this is 4y minus 1, so the second one needs to also be 4y minus 1. That's how you know this needs to be a negative 2 out here. So now you just common factor the 4y minus 1, and you're left with 3y minus 2, and you're done. Finally, we have one more, okay? So this is, can be looked at as a complex trinomial or it can be looked at as a perfect square. So you identify a perfect square if your first term and your last term are perfect squares. So in this case, this would be 2x all squared and 5 all squared, okay? So 2x quantity squared and 5 squared. But that's not enough, you also have to look at the middle term. So in this case, the middle term is 20x. So in order for it to be a perfect square, it has to be two times your a value times your b value. So our a value here is two, and our b value is five. So two times five is 10, times two is 20. So this is a perfect square. So when you have a perfect square, you can factor it right to ax plus b, all squared, or if this is a minus, then it would be ax minus b all squared. So I can factor this to a 2x plus 5 quantity squared, which is really just like writing 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. Now you can also do decomposition with this, where the sum is 20 and the product is 100. How about you try that and make sure that you would get 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. Okay, so that's your review on factoring. Like I said, this is a very important concept. Make sure you practice it and know it as well as you possibly can. Look up other resources and seek out help if you don't understand it. And just practice, practice, practice until you do. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned lots.